All right, guys, so we are here for <clears throat> lesson 18. Um, oh, went too far. Went too far. Lesson 18, we are talk, making an interactive card. It's a mini project. Actually, it's a major project. Um, we are looking at how to make an, uh, an interactive like Christmas card, holiday card, birthday card, whatever the case may be. You can see our question of the day here. What skills and practices are important when creating an interactive program? Your objectives. Students will be able to apply an iterator pattern to variables or properties in a loop, meaning something will move across the screen, right? Sequence commands to draw in the proper order so your code is well done. Use conditionals to react to keyboard input or changes in variables. So if I press the arrow, this happens. If the motion moves past the middle of the screen, this happens, right? So you are going to get an activity guide to help you complete something like this. Now let's go over here and look at what this card would look like, right? So when I click run, here's what they did. And if I keep shaking, it, the text says, move the mouse to shake your present, keep shaking, and then boom, we get two things. And now we have this thing that's a sprite property that's moving at randomness, and then we have a rotation pattern, right? All while that conditional was saying, if your mouse shakes this many times, this will happen. So we want you to create something like this. Do not steal this idea. Come up with your own, okay? So let's look over here. We've got to write a definition, which is a short description of your scene, thinking about ways to include the following requirements in your holiday, birthday, whatever card you're going to have. Three sprites at least with updating properties. So you can use random movement or counter pattern. Two conditional. So if this happens, then this will happen. That either responds to user input, meaning I did something with the mouse or keyboard, or at and one conditional that's triggered by a variable or sprite property. So if a sprite moves to a certain point, or if it rotates a certain way, then this will happen. Give me a description. Then take a few minutes to sketch out the rough idea, include color, your shape, sprites, get it all in there so you have an idea of what you're doing. You'll come down here and tell me these are the sprites you must have, okay? So you have to have three sprites, like I said, three sprites, okay? The image you're going to choose on them, the label you're going to choose on them, what they're going to do, right? Are they going to be rotating? Are they going to be random number? Or are they going to be a counter pattern? Okay. Then your conditionals. I have three here in case you want more than one, but you only have to have two of these right here, right? So you'll have two conditionals that either respond to user input, such as I press a key down or I move the mouse, right? As well as a conditional that responds to how a variable or property, a sprite property changes, okay? It also has this thing right here. Do you need variables to store information about where something is? Well, if you notice in our car, it had to have a variable to store how many times I moved my mouse, right? So the example they gave us, like they needed a shake count. The variable will keep track of how many times the user moves the mouse. And when it reaches 50, the present will disappear and the puppy and a bike will appear. So it had a variable that it was storing and counting back and forth. You may need something like that. If that's the case, you'll fill out this table. But if you don't, that table is optional. Once you fill out all that, you'll come over back to code.org and you'll start working through these levels, paying attention to what each level says, right? You've got some examples you can do. You don't have to do these, right? But you can practice if you need to. If you have questions, you can go back and look at them. On level three, if it gets there, come on, level three, you'll notice is where your background is, right? Level four. In level three, you're only going to do your background. Once you have that set, you go to level four. Level four is you're adding sprites, right? So progress through. Do not build the entire card in level three. Hit finish and move on, right? So that's the project guide. When you get done with coding, you'll come down and answer reflection questions. You will turn in your project, your interactive card on code.org, and the activity guide to me. Good luck.